Slinky Dog is one of the most loyal toy, using his body to save his friends in every single Toy Story movies. Yet, there is still no accurate replica of him in real life. Why? Hey guys, I am ZW and this is a special one because it was interrupted by the virus. I had to abandon it for a while and I think it led to a better result actually, I feel. Let's first start with a quick review. The packaging looks really old school, only for this particular 75th anniversary version. I got it for about 30 bucks from Amazon. It's brand new in package and it's looking broken. <gasps> no, I really started messing with it before filming to kind of understand the structure and the plan ahead. It requires a little force to open it up with a screwdriver. The legs are screwed on and it, I will try to take it apart to see if I can articulate it. Weirdly enough, you can see there is some sort of pull string mechanism inside the body which is extended all the way to the tail. I don't really get the purpose. And the tail is actually supposed to have a downwards resting position. For the front portion of Slinky, the green collar should have been larger and rounder. The front look where you pull him around should be rounder as well, not sharp like a nipple. Slinky's mouth is too small, as in the sticker should be bigger. And the nose, I feel it's also too sharp. Unfortunately, mine isn't flushed against the face and there's a little gap that's quite disturbing. Speaking of disturbing, we have of course quite visibly the various gaps around the face and the two halves of his head. Not to mention the fake leather ears that are just too darn smooth. So let's get to work by poking a screwdriver into his upper body. There's like these holes around the legs for you to slot your two in and wiggle your way into the crevices to force it outwards. It's honestly quite tedious and you might need to use some force. But most importantly, a lot of patience. Try to make your way around the entire perimeter and you should be able to force your way out. Yes, I think it's this thing that is messing with us. This screw here that I don't know, oh, it's used to secure the two halves. Okay, that makes sense. Now, digging his nose didn't really work out and we must resort to extreme measures and cut it. Say hello to Slinky Pig. This string is really ugly and I have no idea how to remove it. I mean, since we're already destroying stuff, uh, what, might as well. Oh, and all these residues. Eh? I don't know what gave me the urge to twist it, but yeah, it's that simple. No cutting required. You are welcome. Finally, you can unscrew this piece of crap and move on to the legs. But how man, when I was planning for this, it looked really straightforward. Like if it doesn't move because of the screws, unscrew it. But something seems to be blocking the path of rotation. So I decided to start again, cutting things off. The thing that is used to secure the screws, gone. The two thingies on the side, gone. Corners of the body, gone. Nothing works. It just kept pushing the whole back panel out. And this is what we call an epic failure. <laughs> well, articulation is not my forte. Modding faces is, and I've decided to move on to his derby face. After removing the tongue sticker, I tied his pretty ears back because I didn't want to start cutting things again yet, which didn't last long because I want to get rid of these nasty Mr. Bean eyebrows. Like, come on, look at his eyebrows. He's supposed to be high, happy, happily high. Oh no, there's a hole. Oh well, it actually gave me an inside look of the mechanism. Uh, sorry, excuse my curiosity. Okay, the plan was to somehow fill these holes up and re sculpt it, but then I realized that the eyeballs are also not well done either. It's supposed to be round like a sucker, not an apple. So I started sending and <laughs> Yo, COVID was horrible. I literally laid in bed and rewatched every Pixar movie. But of course, I was also feeling miserable as hell. And it took me about a month to get back on my feet to start uploading again. And it seems like the YouTube algorithm has given up on me. But it's okay, I just want to say thank you to the people who have stuck with me and watched the videos during this period. Let's resume our customization with this Pop2 scanner. There is just no way I will be returning to sending now that we have received our scanner after the long break. 
we are better off starting from scratch and printing one ourselves. The useful part about scanning is that it literally gives you a digital copy of what you scan at the same scale. It's very helpful when you want to know the exact dimensions for printing later on. This is what it looks like in ZBrush and oh my fingers, oops. With this, I can know the exact size of the sphere that I need for the head. I can also reuse the mouth by smoothing it and adjusting its shapes. And I can make sure that the eyes are not too big by comparing them side by side. Time to fix his eyebrows digitally. I mean, it's so much easier to do it digitally and duplicate it to the other side. Still not convinced? For his eyelids, I merely duplicated his eyeballs, cut them in half and adjusted it. Now we duplicate it and ta-da! For his iris, I used a cylinder and to see things more clearly, I decided to give the part some color to help me match the reference photo more accurately. Wait, something's off. Oh, right, of course, his, his nose. Duh. It's pretty easy. Again, it's a sphere adjusted in accordance to the pictures and it's done. Another concern of mine when I was planning to sculpt my own slinky was the years. Like, how am I supposed to know where the position and the size of the hole would be? That's the main reason why I pushed the project back until I got a scanner because now everything is so much easier. Same goes for the neck connector which I could find the right size by resizing the cylinder and we know the exact size. Otherwise, the neck might not fit. And with the software, I could take some holes on top and below. I also made a new collar, a new pull string thingy and let's print. As usual, we are efficient and we are going to remove the head while we wait for the printer to make our superior slinky head. I also want to get this years out without destroying them to have a good reference for tracing later. I really have no idea how to remove the head, but since we already got these holes, why not make them bigger? So it seems like they use hot glue to secure the ears. Let's cut around the glue, careful not to cut his ears. And we got it out in one piece. Uh, it's already so mangled up, we could afford to use some force. Yep. Unfortunately, the neck connector has been glued shut. No way I can remove this without destroying it. Just get it over and done with. Holy cow, I almost died. This is why you don't buy cheap tools from China. Anyway, it took 16 hours to print and I didn't even print it at the finest resolution. Otherwise, it would have taken longer to print. And this is what you get for rushing. I think it's called stair stepping effect or something. It happens because printing is done in layers. It's also the leaking, which is a common occurrence for being a cheapskate. It only happens if you hollow the print out to save material, but easily fixed with some clay and some heat. Next, we're gonna get rid of those internal supports that are actually present in all my prints, but it's more visible here from Slinky's eye hole. I'm the eye hole man. Eye holes, get them today. I mean ear holes. Damn, chill. Ah, oh, such a chore. Finally cleaned it out. Job's not done, man. I know I said no more sanding if we print, but you really don't want to skip this step because when you paint it, it will be more obvious and you will regret it. But it's okay though, resin prints are easier to sand and it gets smooth really fast. But I want to be more careful around these areas because I want to preserve those sweet details. And as good as new. Uh, okay, bad news. Something went wrong along the way and I made the hole a little too big. So I came up with an impromptu method of securing the head. If I could get this to insert into the neck, it should be secured like this. Now let's deal with the body itself. The pull string thingy is too small and it needs to go. I sanded the neck to make it smoother and not look like two separate pieces and it's time to get the hole covered. Normally, I would use clay like I did for the chin but I'm feeling particularly creative and I decided to use UV resin instead. After literally just tearing a piece of paper and covering the hole, I put some resin into the hole, wiped off the excess and made it hard with the flashlight. Ouch, it's actually heating up, damn. But yeah, after that I sanded it down and the hole is filled. Using the same method, I first secured the collar with clay and covered up the holes to prevent any leakage and then poured in more UV resin to fill the gaps. Quick and easy, no waiting, no crackings. For his ears, the original ones are actually too short for my print and a little too thin at the opening. Good thing we are making our own. 
with this 3M thick leather sticker thing that I got from China. I don't even know if it's an original 3M product or it's just some China leather with 3M double sided tape on, but it's good enough for me. After tracing the ears and cutting it out, I realized that the thickness is not there, so I peeled off the tape, stuck it on again, cut around the edges, and three layers should do the trick. Basically, I start with the same rounded edge and ended off thicker and longer. Beautiful. Painting time! Painting was such a bother, I swear. I didn't have the right paint, so I had to improvise. One mistake I made was to use transparent paints. It's more forgiving when you make a mistake, but it takes a hell lot of time to get those colors in. And somehow the body got contaminated on a few spots and paint couldn't stick on properly, which meant that I had to sand the surfaces off, reprime it and paint it again. Finally, to get an even surface throughout, I had to mask parts off in order to airbrush the colors on. Too bad my masking skills are not there yet and there will always be a need to do touch-ups. For the eyes, yeah, I got so sick of masking, I straight up hand brushed it and hoped for the best. Looks okay to me. Same for the blacks. The mouth was another irritating part because the masking was crap and it leaked out. Damn, so ugly. I did my best to fix the edges and moved on to the browns. Oh, that looks wrong. Anyway, I cut some red felt for his tongue, painted his collar green, painted the sides of his ears, UV resin his eyes, and we are done. Okay, besides the endless repaints that you don't get to see, I would say that this is pretty satisfying. I did have to glue the head onto the neck cause it kept falling off, so it's really ugly at the back. Overall, the new face looks really good. The paints could be better and the ears look fine. I also fixed other Toy Story toys here, so stay tuned to my channel and goodbye.